Hello, everyone, and welcome to VMBlog's coverage of VMware Explore 2023 event taking place in Las Vegas at the Venetian. And today we're joined by Mike McDonough, the Executive Director of Software and Solutions at Lenovo. Mike, appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. Happy to be here. So I know Lenovo is a huge company with multiple product lines, but from your perspective, can you give us a quick overview of the company? Oh, sure, absolutely. Lenovo is a multinational company operating in many geographies. We end up saying the big five, but we are global in, in essence of it. We have far reaching capabilities. We do everything from 5G to, uh, as most people know, as for our laptops and our edge devices being number one in the world. I mean, my group, what we work on is predominantly the data center from the legacy of IBM. So we have unprecedented amount of good quality, fast performing servers in conjunction with industry leading um, storage and capabilities. We wrap this around with services these days. About two and a half years ago, we started a service business where we have a managed service. Some people consider it an edge cloud, but what we really do is we make it easy for our customers to purchase whatever way they want. And so that allows them to do an OpEx model and pay as a go type model. And what does your partnership with uh, VMware look like and how do you guys fit into their ecosystem? Well, first of all, thanks for asking that. I'll say that the VMware relationship is long. It's been really, really a great relationship. We kicked off that relationship with our latest joint um, joint marketing investment. I would say something along those lines where we are working together shoulder to shoulder. And I'll give you a quick example of that. We probably have one of the world's most modernized labs jointly together. It's sitting on VMware property in Austin, Texas. We've moved millions of dollars of our latest equipment, our latest stuff out, out down to them. We have our teams working collaboration with their teams. They tap into most of the world's major clouds in order to test it. And we just finished our phase one, and our phase one um, exercise there. So I lead that part of it and I'm very intimately involved in it. And it's, it's just an amazing relationship. Uh, our alliance teams, our senior management are very interconnected. We will be talking with VMware easily multiple times a week, and not just the VMware reps at the field. We talk a lot with the senior management. We meet with them. My boss, um, this guy named Brian Connors, is actually out there this week. I mean, literally out this week, and this is the week before uh, you know, VMworld or Explore, as we call it nowadays. Right. And since we are here today talking about VMware Explore, can you maybe describe some of the type of problems that Lenovo is solving for VMware users? There's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, attendees at the show. What What's going to make them, you know, interested to come by and, and visit the Lenovo booth? Oh, thanks. Thanks for that. Well, first of all, we're a diamond sponsor. So we really put our shoulder behind it this year. The second thing, and we have to have empathy here. The world's a tougher place. We, we, we ended the pandemic, uh, we'll say, you know, not that long ago. And boy, was that a tough, tough couple years. And now we're going into some economic challenges at a global scale. And so when people are purchasing equipment or even software, they're asking more. They're asking, what else can you deliver? How else can you be a better partner with us? And so we are working with VMware on both orchestration and automation. What that allows us to do, and whatever sport or whatever analogy you want, it's like having extra sets of hands out there. The second thing we're working heavily on is predictive analytics. Everything you have about generative AI, but our predictive analytics. So, you know, our responsibility is to provide as much uptime as possible. They're physical devices. Things break, things happen for anybody. But what we like to say is we're working to become the best in the world to give predictive analytics. So multiple weeks ahead of time, if we can, or at least a week ahead of time, when something seems to be not running to the level of your expectations, we can take action to gracefully take it out of service and upgrade it, modernize it. We can do the what if or we're seeing congestion on the network or congestion on the server cluster or congestion in the, in the, in the storage forms. This is what it's about. It's about doing more than just offering a piece of hardware. 
It's about delivering hardware with software and making the operational, we'll call the day two operation, the life, the, the life cycle of the product that much easier for our customers. Because we know it's tough out there and there's a lot of tough decisions being made. Well, talking about, you know, you're more than just hardware, um, maybe you can give us kind of a overview of the different technology offerings that you offer and give us kind of a deeper look into that. Sure, absolutely. Now, you know, it's easy for me to talk about the areas that we control or I lead. So that's mostly the software side of the business. So one of the things we offer to anybody is that we have over 30 partners. When I worked at VMware for 12 years, it was an amazing experience. And I cherish that. I learned a lot. It was the backbone of much of, of what I do mostly today. But now Lenovo allows us to touch everything. And so by doing that and having such a good relationship with the VMware, we're able to give insights. Here's another little quip or a little statistic. Over 50% of our business, we'll say about 50% of our business, if you look at, at the analysts, are working with giant hyperscalers. If you think about hyperscalers, they were the first companies to create hyperconverged infrastructure, which by the way, put VMware on the map in 2012. We are currently working with them. Sometimes they come in and we're just an ODM and they come in, we take their order, we work with them, we talk to them, we understand their particular needs. Other times they come in, they look at our hardware and they ask us to change and modify for their needs. All those learnings of that large scale capabilities, the speed, the resiliency, the operational efficiencies, because these clouds, these hyperscales need to run very efficiently, it's taken ingested, learned, and shared with the rest of the world in our products. Now, with that being said, I can't go without saying that, you know, there's confidentiality and there's NDA stuff. We would never, ever cross that line. But the osmosis of learning and working with them and then being able to produce a product from that large, we'll say, a base of customers who have an infinite, a, a huge amount of budget because that's, you know, that's their, their, their business is a really strong byproduct for the rest of the world to take advantage, both our customers and the ecosystem. And we're happy to say that. An example is HPC. Oh my gosh, our HPC market share is insane. We are very, very quick and, and speed. We use a lot of, we, we lead the world in, in water cooled and size and footprints. It is just amazing. All that comes from the DNA of the relationships that we have built with our customers, listening, learning, collaborating. So I'll end up with that question with saying one other thing, which is has to do with the software side. Software is very important to Lenovo. We recognize that we're never gonna compete with our customers. We'll never come out with a product directly goes against VMware or any of the other partner ecosystems. But what we like to do is we look to form glue. We look to see how we can use our partner software with our hardware, to help in three different areas, deployment, configuration, and management. Or I'd like to say day zero, when you take it out of the box, we maybe with our own hands or simplicity, because we have software that automates it and just gets stuff up and running, all the way to, to the management of the life cycle of the product. So from an orchestration and automation perspective, we're really spending a lot of time. Now, the last thing would be is cloud can't talk about cloud here. So on the cloud side of it, you're gonna find in the November timeframe, we'll be coming out with the next iteration and next gestation of Xclarity. And we'll call that Xclarity One, which is gonna have a major leap in technology. I'm not gonna discuss it now, but this is gonna be a cornerstone for us moving on forward. Thanks for that question. And, and you gave us great, uh, a great dive into uh, the, the product line and what you guys are, especially the software side, like like Brian said, most people know Lenovo. They think of uh, think of the hardware, oh, exactly. but uh, yeah. So you know, with with a, a show attendees, there's a lot of booths that are going to be you know on the expo floor. Sure. What is it? Uh, are, are there like uh, bullet things that you think yeah. uh, make Lenovo stand out above the rest that differentiate you or make you unique in the market? Absolutely. So, you know, we have a little bit of a blurred line here because I deal in the world of NDAs and confidentiality. And I know 
of two or three huge announcements that will be happening at the show, even on main stage with us and the VMware and other partners and ecosystems. So what I will say to you is this, as you're listening, and I hope everybody attends the keynote, and you hear this innovation, you're going to see our name quite a few times right up next to these innovations. And that's interesting, right? So that's a slide. But we've gone one step further. If you come to our booth, it's a diamond sponsor, it's a huge booth. We have brought experts. We have spared no expense of bringing our top talent in there. And more importantly, we're going to demonstrate what they're going to be announcing. And so we'll just say on the AI side, we have some really cool stuff that's going to be shown and demonstrated there. And we hope you come. And then on the hardware side, we're responding. We're responding to those needs. We're responding to, as the cost of building AIs, how can you do it more efficiently? So those are two different areas that I will say. Over 75% of a person's spend in AI has to do with inferencing. And I'm gonna actually put a paper out on this. You'll see it on LinkedIn and our own sites, but we're talking about that. Inferencing represents 75% of the cost of maintaining an AI infrastructure. We're addressing that. We're working on that now, and we're taking those positions. So we're consciously, constantly looking at the cost of ownership of the software side of things, the operational side, the hardware side. We're trying to drive simplicity in the purchasing so that you, the customer, and our partners have choice. So, Mike, uh, I, I think one of the things we like to kind of talk about is is futures, right? Where things are oh. heading. We're, we're skipping through 2023 pretty quickly right now, uh, heading into 2024. Uh, you kind of mentioned one thing that a lot of folks are talking about, AI. Uh, what what other themes, you know, are trends do you, do you see heading into 2024? And uh, what maybe, you know, if you can talk about anything around AI that Lenovo is doing, uh, that'd be uh, great as well. Well, that's awesome. Thanks for that opportunity. So let me say that sometimes even a blind squirrel gets something. So you know what I mean? They find, they find the nut. And that situation is that we really read the tea leaves well in this one. Really read it. Our AI initiatives started in almost 2017. 2017 is as far back as when we started looking and planning, when we started understanding and investing and having our research there. OK, this June, we took a pause and we just started calculating just what level of investment we're making. And we talked about one point two billion U.S. dollars in that. I talked just a little while about the automation and the orchestration piece. We have a piece of software called Lyco. Matter of fact, I lead the management of that with partnerships of, from other BUs. Lyco has pivoted over the last two years to be an, under, an underpinning for AI automation and the substrate. And we're going to continue to invest with that because now we're just moving it from the prem and you're going to see a little bit of a tease here up into the cloud to make even simplicity. We're creating hooks into our hardware so that the most important thing people recognize here is the data, the analytics side of it. So we're turning around and making those available to our customers for them to either build their own models or take advantage of the models that we're introducing as we move forward. The other thing is we talk about is the, is the amount of investment of people. We have dedicated teams, not just in the labs like some companies do, but today out in the field. You may hear my peer who's speaking here today, Robert Daigle. He wakes up every single day focused on AI. So the final thing is, let's talk a little about the future of AI, AI ops. I know it's a buzzword. Some of you may have heard it before, but it's going to continue to grow. AI ops really is the operations of AI within the operations center. Some people define it as AI is becoming so important, it's the operation of just AI. But it's a broader look at it. It's all the AI within operations, all the insight. I have been working on AOPS for over two years. Matter of fact, at the end of this month, I have a readout to our senior most people of both where we're going, what our investments are, and how are we going to solve that? And you, Mr. Customer or Mr. Partner, might say, well, Mike, 
Why is AOPS important? It goes back to once again, cost savings. A human being, when we create a telephone number, seven, eight digits, depending upon the world code and all that stuff, that's about as far as we can remember. That's that's why the telephone numbers in the US have this many digits, because they did studies and they said, hey, how much numbers can you can you actually remember? Now think about that. If we can remember that much, and there's so many thousands, sometimes millions of devices out there, we're going to need some form of help and assistance in managing our network, managing our lands, helping us with the edge, connectivity to cloud. Things haven't gotten easier since we started in our careers here. And what this new iteration of AI ops is, it's introducing models, both improving on models, iterating on models, and helping companies bring higher uptimes, meet SLAs, and be more competitive out there. We, some people say that the AI ops model is actually almost a seven layer, very similar to the OSI model. I'll be transparent to you where we see. We're never gonna compete at the application level. That is something that companies specialize on, but we are the best and will continue the best at that lower level. The physical level, really telling the state of the hardware, having porous connectivity to whatever management plane you have above it so that we can react to stuff that's happening in the virtualization world, whether it's VMs or whether it's containers or whether it's the next technology, taking action to that and also letting the higher applications know when there is some sort of congestion in the network or issue in the network. That is our contract. That is where we're investing. And you're going to see, as I said, in November, an announcement coming up that puts us a major step forward. And you're going to continue seeing partnerships with VMware becoming deeper and more stronger. Okay, well, some uh, really exciting stuff and groundbreaking. Um, where can people go if they want to find out more information about Lenovo and maybe some of your AI initiatives? That's awesome. So um, we have a lot of different ways to touch this. Well, first of all, the easiest way is our website, you know, but that's that's kind of like years ago. Most everybody goes to the website. So Lenovo.com is there. You can do a quick search on the keywords. You can do, go AI Innovator Program. It'll pop up and show our innovators. You can hit software. We have our software side. I recently hired, and I like about giving back and having diversity in the team. I just brought on two new college grads, and they have tremendous amount of energy, which is awesome. Um, one of those individuals is a specialist in social media. All she does is she understands social media. So you're going to see and continue to see us amping up the way we communicate so that the way you look and the way you like to research, the way you want to find information, we are going to you versus you having to come to us. So we're investing in the LinkedIn. We're investing in other social media platforms. And we want to hear from you. So please, if you ever want to link with me, LinkedIn, I'm always open for impressions and comments. We want to make sure that we're an easy partner to do business with and also an easy way to communicate with, as well as to learn and share our learnings, as well as listen to you. Well, thanks for taking the time to uh, speak you. with VM Blog, and uh, we we'll look forward to checking out the Lenovo booth at uh, VMware Explore. And look for me. I got a couple presentations out there and doing some press and analysts, and I look forward to seeing everybody and all my friends back at VMware Explorer this year, 2023.